In this class, we take a break from physics and do pure math. We're going to look at two theorems that are very, very important in vector calculus that have applications in physics, electromagnetic theory, for example, and in engineering. We're going to look at a surface integral that encloses a volume. And we're going to look at a simple case where the electric field is pointing upward in the z direction only and i'm going to make a cube for my enclosure for my nice volume now remember the integral that we're doing is a surface integral we start off with the surface integral and that means we look at the six surfaces and find the little areas there and their normals point perpendicular to each panel and away from the inside. Notice that when I do my dot product that I'm only going to have a contribution from the top and the bottom panel because that's where the electric field points here with the normal or here against the normal. Notice that at the top you have delta y and delta x for your area and the direction is given by the normal that points away from the center pointing up k hat for the bottom you have delta x delta y again but pointing away from the inside would be a negative k hat notice the electric field here is pointing up in both cases but can have different values because here you're at the x y z and here you're at x y and the z is z plus delta z we're going to shrink these down to zero, all these deltas later, but we're going to look at this with the z plus delta z first. Let's do the setup and then take the limit last. So here we don't have to worry about the four walls because there the electric field points up. All the normals point perpendicular and the dot product there will give zero. So we just have two to contend with at the top where we have x, y, and z plus delta z for the variables in the a e field. I'm going to go ahead and put e sub z here to remind us that the electric field is indeed along the z direction. And then I multiply by the area. Here I subtract because they're anti-parallel, that is your electric field and your normal, and we're at x, y, and z here. When we shrink down, we'll be all real set up here with a nice compact equation but I didn't do that yet so I'm going to put this implied sign where I think here it's easier to see the progress that I'm making and take the limit at the end. So we have this nice uh, setup here where I can factor out the delta x delta y which I'll do here and have this difference of the electric field component the z component and this is looking like a derivative. You have something with z plus delta z and then you subtract with z or more accurately a partial derivative since we have more than one variable that we can be looking at. So here we're taking x and y to be constant and looking at the z plus delta z and the z. So I need to have a delta z underneath to have the partial derivative set up. I'm going to do that by putting a delta z underneath and a delta z here and that these haven't here been taken to their limits so they're finite quantities and we just simply have delta z over delta z as one so we can do that and then as we look at this we are going to get a partial derivative of the z component of the electric field with respect to z and we're going to have a volume see what we're doing here is have the derivative and the integral at respect to that same variable that's going to cancel so because the integral is like the opposite of a derivative and in doing so we won't change things but we'll be in a sense here see doing a promotion we promote here we promote the area to a volume and we're going to have a volume integral so that third integral is important because it's going to undo that partial derivative and get me back this up here which is then the area integral so by the partial derivative 
going in. That's the whole key. The partial derivative kicks in, so you need another integral to undo that, not change anything, and then you have major promotion. You have promoted an aerial integral, an area integral, to a volume integral, but that partial derivative then appears. So when we do that, we set the equal sign because now we have taken the limits as delta z, delta x, delta y all go to zero. And then it's easy to see the most general case. If you had electric field components in the x and y directions, you'd have piercings in other directions. And the neat thing about this is that you have dx, dy, dz, one of each. So for these other cases, they're going to be the same. But what will be different is notice this partial derivative when you had the z component you took the derivative with respect to z. So you'll have these three partial derivatives will add up as you pierce the other surfaces. Remember you had six surfaces, the two z surfaces, what was relevant was the electric field in the z direction and you got a partial derivative. Well, it'll be relevant for the other walls. It'll all add up because you're, you're summing up, you're doing this uh, enclosed surface integrals, how you set it up, they'll all add up and they'll be the same in terms of the component versus the derivative so that's what's going to contribute piercing out of those other walls the pairs in each case the x pair the y pair and the z pair and we're basically finished that's it what remains to be done is to have a compact notation so we define this del operator by definition to be the partial derivative with respect to x i hat plus partial with respect to y j hat and the same here with the uh, Z. And then if you take the dot product, remember if you take the dot product, when we did like A dot E, for example, we did A dot B, let's do E to A dot E, it was AX EX plus AY EY plus AZ EZ. So the only difference is that instead of having AX, you have D DX. You have, you have an operator. So that operator is going to work on the X component. This will work on the y component, this will work on the z component, and that's called the divergence. The divergence of v, by definition, is this. And once when we do that, we are finished, we have the nice beautiful result that the enclosed surface integral over this enclosed volume gets transformed to a volume integral where you have a divergence as the integrand, what you're integrating. So very, very nice. The dv here represents the volume element, dx, dy, dz, and that's the compact form. That is the divergence theorem.